Hey everybody, how are you today? I hope things are going well. It's been a long time since we've gotten to be together and I'm just wondering what's going on with you. Like, what are you doing at your home? Are you doing anything fun and interesting? Have you like built a cool fort or learned to play an instrument or um, looked into something you think is really interesting? I hope you're doing those things. Um, this is a great time to do something new and different. So we're gonna keep talking about the idea of um, social justice or social fairness. And so I'm gonna read a book that I think is a good book um, that takes place in a different country on a different continent. And, um, but it's a great book, it's a great illustration of how small things can make a really big difference in a person's life. So this book is called Beatrice's Goat and it is by Paige McBriar and illustrated by Lori Lowstetter. See, here is one of the beginning pages. It doesn't have any words on it. And if you look closely right here, there is a mama walking and she's got a baby strapped on her back and she has bananas on her head. So that definitely tells us it's not around here. You maybe have seen palm trees before, but I don't think, I've never seen mamas carrying bananas on their heads. Would that be funny, do you think? If you were to visit the small African village of Kanzinga in the rolling hills of Western Uganda, and if you were to take a left at the crossroads and follow a narrow dirt path between two tall banana groves, you would come to the home of a girl named Beatrice. Beatrice, Beatrice lives here with her mother and five younger brothers and sisters in a sturdy mud house with a fine steel roof. The house is new, so is the shiny blue furniture inside. In fact, many things are new to Beatrice and her family lately. And it's all because of a goat named Mugisa. Beatrice loves everything about Mugisa, the feel of her coarse brown and white coat, the way her chin hairs curl just so, and how Mugisa gently teases her by butting her knobby horns against Beatrice's hand, thump, thump, like a drum beat waiting for a song. And there's one reason why Beatrice loves Mugisa most of all. In the time before Mugisa, Beatrice spent her days helping her mama hoe and plant in the fields, tend the chickens, watch the younger children, and grind cassava flour that they would take to market to sell. Once in a while, when she was tending baby Pascavia, Beatrice would stop by the schoolhouse. Often the students had carried their long wooden benches outside to work under the cool shade of the jackfruit trees. Then Beatrice would stand quietly off to one side, pretending she was a student too. Oh, how she longed to be a schoolgirl! How she yearned to sit on one of the benches and figure sums on a small slate chalkboard. How she wished to turn the pages of a worn copy book and study each word over and over until it stuck in her mind like a burr. I'll never be able to go to school, she, sigh, she would sigh. How could I ever save enough money to pay for books or a uniform? Hmm, I wonder what it would feel like to not be able to get to go to school. I know right now you're not at school, but you're getting to attend school and to learn. I wonder what it would be like to not, you know, not be sure that that was something you were, you would be able to get to do. One day, while Beatrice was busy pulling weeds, Mama came to her with dancing eyes. Beatrice, some kind-hearted people from far away have given us a lucky gift. We are one of 12 village families to receive a goat. Beatrice was puzzled. A goat? What kind of gift was a goat? It couldn't get up each morning and start the charcoal fire for cooking. It couldn't hike down to the stream each week and scrub their dirty clothes clean. It couldn't keep an eye on Grace, Moses, Harriet, Joash and Pascavia, her long fingers tugged patiently at the weeds. That's very nice, Mama, she said politely. Then Mama added, it will be your job to take care of the goat. If you do, it will bring wonderful things. Beatrice looked up at her mother. Will this goat come soon, she asked, because I would like to meet such a goat. Mama laughed. Good things take time. First, I must plant pastures and build our goat a shed. Beatrice nodded slowly. Surely Mama knew what she was doing. 
I will help you, she declared. It seems like this girl takes on a lot of responsibility um, in her family. I wonder what kind of responsibilities you have. Do you take care of younger brothers or sisters or help around the house or maybe help pull weeds in the garden? Um, so I, I just think it's interesting. Just it, I feel like this girl's life is very different from our lives. And uh, I mean, I think it's amazing maybe what kids are capable of doing. Maybe a lot more than we, than, than we think about. For the next few months, Beatrice worked harder than ever. She helped Mama collect the posts for the shed walls. Then she lashed the posts together with banana fibers. She planted narrow bands of stiff elephant grass along the edge of their cassava field. She put in pigeon trees and lab lab vines between the banana trees. That sounds like a lot of hard work. Finally, one day, Beatrice's goat arrived, fat and sleek as a ripe mango. Beatrice stood shyly with her brothers and sisters, then stepped forward and circled the goat once. She knelt close, inspecting its round belly and ran her hand along its smooth back. Mama says you are our lucky gift, she whispered. So that is what I will name you, Mugisa, luck. Two weeks later, Mugisa gave birth gave birth. It was Beatrice who discovered first one kid, then two. Twins, she exclaimed, stooping down to examine them. See that, my Mugisa, you have already brought us two wonderful things. Beatrice named the first kid Mulindwa, which means expected, and the second one Kaihembo, or surprise. Each day, Beatrice made sure Mugasa got extra um, elephant grass and water to help her produce lots of milk even though it meant another long trip down to the stream and back. Have you ever seen baby goats somewhere? They're pretty cute. When the kids no longer needed it, Beatrice took her own first taste of Mugisa's milk. Mmm, sweet, she said, mixing the rest into her cup of breakfast porridge. Beatrice knew Mugisa's milk would keep them all much healthier. Huh, so that's one thing that's helping. It's, it's another source of nutrition for the family. Now each morning after breakfast, Beatrice would head off to the shed to sell whatever milk was left over. Open for business, she would say, in case anyone was listening. Often she would spy her friend Bunain coming through the banana groves. Good morning, Beatrice. Mugisa expected and surprised, Bunain would always say. Then he would hand Beatrice a, a tall pail that she would fill to the top with Mugisa's milk. When Beatrice finished pouring, Bunain would hand her a shiny coin and Beatrice would carefully tuck the money into the small woven purse at her side. Day after day, week after week, Beatrice watched the purse get fuller. Soon there would be enough money for a new shirt for Moses and a warm blanket for the bed she shared with Grace. One day, Beatrice returned from collecting water and noticed Mama frowning and counting the money in her woven purse. Beatrice put down the water can and rushed to her mother's side. Mama, what is it? She asked. What's wrong? As she looked up, Mama's frown turned to a small smile. I think, she said, you may just have enough to pay for school. School, Beatrice gasped in disbelief. What about all the other things we need? First things first, Mama said. Beatrice threw her arms around her mother's neck. Oh, Mama, thank you. Then she ran to where her goat stood, chewing her cud and hugged her tight. Oh, Mugisa, she whispered, today I am the lucky one. You have given me the gift I wanted most. I wonder what life would be like if you couldn't go to school. Like, how would that change all of your life? Like, what things would you not know that maybe would help you in life if you just didn't have those skills because you didn't get to go to school? Hmm, think about that. The very next week, Beatrice started school. On the first morning that she was to attend, she sat proudly waiting for milk customers in her new yellow blouse and blue jumper, Mugisa, by her side. 
Beatrice felt nervous and excited at the same time. Mugisa pressed close, letting her coarse coat brush soft softly against Beatrice's cheek. Oh, Mugisa, Beatrice cried, I'll miss you today. Then she thought again about all the good things Mugisa was bringing. Mama said that soon surprise would be sold for a lot of money. It will be enough to tear down this old house, she had explained. We will be able to put up a new one with a steel roof that won't leak during the rain. Beatrice heard a rustle and noticed Bunain heading toward her with his empty pail. He eyed her new uniform and sighed, You're so lucky. I wish I could go to school. Beatrice reached out and touched Bunain's arm. I've heard that your family is next in line to receive a goat. A smile crossed Bunain's face. Really? Really? Then Beatrice kissed Mugisa on the soft part of her nose, close to where her chin hairs, hairs curled just so, and started off to school. That's the end. Um, so I wonder what you think about this book. It is actually um, put together by an organization called Heifer International. Um, which is an organization where people can buy livestock like animals and donate them to families um, in need. And, you know, in this book, you can just see how the one goat made such a difference. It gave them nutrition. It gave them money. Um, it made it so their life was, um, was a little bit better. So I hope you enjoyed this book and I wonder how it made you feel. Um, I wonder, I'm wondering um, how she felt when she got to go to school. I wonder what that felt like for her. And I wonder what she felt like when her goat arrived. Was that exciting? So um, I hope you'll talk about this. I hope you'll think about this. And I hope that I will get to see you soon. Bye.